Yeah, because I don't like that. It's really <laughs> Maybe sure. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? I'm just scared. I said you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you sometimes show them. Wow. Well, he, he, I think it was good for us, so. so yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right, it's uh, five thirty. Let's go and get started. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Good to see all of you. Uh, I'll be honest; I didn't expect to see all of you, um, even as late as ten p.m. last night. But here we are. Uh, but it's good to be. It's good to see you all. Uh, how's everyone doing today? Good. good, good. All right, so my name is uh, Professor Justin Tran, and this is uh, EGME 541. So this is our graduate finite element course. So, um, so what I want to do today um, is uh, we're not going to we're not going to we're not going to learn anything. Today, so uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over just a brief um, overview about kind of what you can kind of expect in this class. Uh, I know some of you may have taken a, a finite element class with me before, so uh, this class is 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 quite unique. Um, to all the other finite element classes that I've taught, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more, um, talk a bit about why. Um, and then besides that, I want to talk about the syllabus. I want to take a tour of the course website just so that you kind of have, are aware of uh, kind of where everything is laid out and how it's all organized. Um, today's just kind of a get to know you kind of day. Uh, I didn't really have much time to prepare. Um, I was watching Netflix last night and I'm like, oh, you got to go to work tomorrow. I'm like, all right, well, I'm doing my best. So, um, so it'll be a pretty chill day. I think we'll end pretty early, uh, and then we'll kind of start in earnest on on Thursday. Okay. Um, are there any questions I can answer before we get started for today? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So a little bit about myself. Uh, so my name is Professor Justin Tran. Um, my office is in the other building. Um, so um, I moved. I moved just last semester. So my office is in engineering. So if you take the elevator up the second floor engineering, you come out, you turn right. Um, there's a lot of faculty offices kind of at the end of the hall that way. So I'm, I'm kind of on that side. So 
my exact room number is E220. So I'm at, I'm in the corner. So, um, you know, I'm just going to keep following the ball way down. Right? Uh, my email address is justran at fullerton.edu. So fairly simple to remember. Um, I grew up in this area. So if you, if you know where Cyprus is, it's about kind of 10 miles west from here. Uh, my parents still live there. So it, it's great being able to come back home. Um, I see my parents every other week. Um, hopefully they're as happy to see them as I am to see, uh, or how, hopefully they're as happy to see me as I am to see them. Um, this, I'm, I'm kidding. My parents love me. Um, and so it's, it's good being home. Um, all my, all my education has been in mechanical engineering. So it's a field I'm very familiar with. Uh, I have a lot of friends that work in industry. So, you know, from all across different industries, from like aerospace, um, to biomedical automotive. So, you know, I, I'm very familiar with the field. Uh, my research interests um, involve using engineering tools for studying heart and blood disease. And in particular, the tool that I use the most is finite element analysis. And so it's very relevant to, uh, to this class. Okay, um, so next thing I wanna go over are these are learning objectives. And so if you, you've had me as a professor before, I think you know I see a lot of familiar faces. And so you should be pretty familiar with this. Um, but if you've never had me before, uh, what I like to do at the beginning of class every day is to list out um, kind of a, a list of learning objectives for the day. Um, and kind of on a service level, you know, you can think of these as kind of like an outline of what we're going to cover for that day. Okay. Um, and so if you're coming in early and, and if you're able to get here um, early, you know, I, I always, uh, I always encourage students to write these down. I think it's a really nice way to organize your notes. And so, you know, at the kind of at the top of whatever sheet of notes or the I, I, iPad file, whatever that you write notes on, if you have these learning objectives, then you can kind of look at a glance in terms of you know what we covered that day and kind of use that to organize your your knowledge. Okay, um, but you know if you if you kind of look at how I how I kind of write these, you'll see that they all kind of follow the same format, and that I I start each of these um, learning objectives with a verb, uh, and I do that on purpose. So you know I, I I do that in a way so that you know you have a way to kind of self assess yourself in terms of the knowledge that you learned from that day, okay? Um, so let's, let's take kind of the first one here as an example. So the first learning objective here is to describe the use and utility of finite elements in engineering work, okay? And so by the end of the lecture today, you know, if I ask you, so let's say that, you know, we're writing the elevator together and say, hey, you know, why don't you describe to me the use and utility of an engi of engineering analysis, a finite element analysis in engineering work? Oh, my, my brain's not prepared to work here. Um, Kind of a weird conversation starter, but you know, um, if you if you kind of got everything from the lecture today, uh, you should be able to answer that question. Okay, so a lot of these learning objectives they kind of read they kind of themselves kind of read as if they were kind of exam questions, and so they're kind of a good way to kind of assess assess your knowledge, test your knowledge on everything that you that you learn. Okay, and if you if you if you're reading the learning objectives and you're and you're kind of thinking, oh, you know, I'm I'm not sure that I can do that. That's kind of a good indication for you to kind of go back into your notes, you know, go back to the lecture recording and then to kind of see to see if you can kind of pick up this, this information from, from that class. Okay. okay. Um, so I start every every class with these. And so definitely you can look forward to these um, every day. Okay, uh, so let's get into talking about what this class is about. And so this class is all about finite element analysis. Um, so I think, you know, probably a lot of you have, um, have an idea of what FEA is. Some of you probably have a lot of experience with it, either using ANSYS or, or, or something. Uh, but I think it's kind of good to kind of start from the, from the beginning. Okay? So in a nutshell, you know, FEA is a numerical technique for solving differential equations on arbitrary geometries. Okay? And so basically the idea is that, you know, whenever you have any kind of physical phenomenon, whether it be structural mechanics, fluid mechanics, you know, thermal uh, heat transfer, you know, there are governing equations that, you know, that, that kind of predict its behavior, right? Um, if you can solve these equations, then you can kind of predict what a physical system will do um, in those kinds of situations, right? The problem is that, you know, a lot of these equations are partial differential equations. So they're very, very difficult to solve, uh, at least by hand. And so the idea with FEA is to provide a way, to provide a kind of a, a, an avenue for computers to solve these problems, um, um, to kind of leverage kind of the computational power that, that computers have, okay? The difficulty with this is that, you know, computers, you know, as, as we'll learn in this class, are very powerful tools, but they kind of have to be told exactly what to do. In other words, you have to put the, we have to put the problem in a way that the computer can actually solve, right? And that's where FEA comes into play. And so FEA is the technique that we can use to take kind of a physical problem with governing equations 
and kind of manipulate it, put it in a way that a computer can actually solve. It, okay? And that's and that's particularly relevant for this class. And so this class is 541. So this class, we're going to go really deep into the theory of FBA. And so kind of the, the actual math of actually setting up, you know, how do you go from a differential equation to an algebraic equation that the computer can, can solve? Okay. So we're going to spend a lot of time uh, doing that. Uh, but if you can do that, you know, FEA is a very, very powerful tool. And in fact, you know, it's, it's being used more and more in engineering design and analysis uh, today, Because right? um, it allows for, you know, it allows you basically to work with situations that are way too complicated for you to do by hand. So whether that be the geometries, whether that be the boundary conditions, whether it be the loading, uh, whether you have a time-dependent phenomenon, that's, that always complicates things. Right. With FEA, you know, you can actually analyze these systems in a way that gives you reliable results that you can use to, you know, um, inform your design or inform your analysis. Um, you know, OK. Uh, and, and the reality is, you know, if you're working with any kind of practical engineering system, you know, odds are it's, it's, it, it is going to have a very complicated geometry or, or complicated loading in some way. So, you know, if you want to do kind of a proper analysis of, of, the, um, of the system, you know, FEA or computations of some kind are going to factor into it at some point. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions on, on this so far? Okay. Okay. So let's go over the types of different analysis that, that we can do. Right. Um, so I, I, I group, you know, engineering analysis into kind of three separate categories. So category one is what I call analytical methods. And so these are kind of what I kind of uh, informally like to call pen and paper methods. So this is probably what you're kind of used to learning or you're used to doing from your other engineering classes, right? So you have kind of a system, you have the governing equations, and you solve those governing equations by hand, okay? Um, so for simple problems, you know, with geometries that are simple, maybe they're 1D problems, maybe they're just a simple kind of square or something like that, right? This is a very fast and very inexpensive way to do the analysis. Like all it takes is just a pencil and a paper um, and an engineer, okay? Um, but that's kind of where its limitation is, right? It's, it's, it's limited to just simple problems, right? Once you start to get to more practical kind of realistic, um, you know, problems, you're going to have to take a separate, a different approach because you're not going to be able to solve those, those systems by hand. Okay. So the second type of analysis that's typically done is what I call an experimental approach. Okay. And so experimental approach actually goes and aims to try to uh, physically recreate the scenario that you're looking for. Um, and run an experiment or a test and gather kind of real life data, um, you know, to, to see how things are going to go. Okay. Um, and so in terms of the quality of data, this is the best kind of data that you can get, right? Um, because there's no questioning about whether it happened or not, because it happened in real life. So of course it, it happened, right? Um, and so, you know, usually when you, when you get experimental results, you know, no one really questions the, uh, the validity of the other results, right? The downside to this is that it's very costly and often very time consuming to set up. Right? I'll give an example uh, in the aerospace industry. Right? Um, and so building an airplane costs a tremendous amount of money and a tremendous amount of, uh, of manpower and time to do. Right? And so if you were to say, you know, let's say that you're, you're working on redesigning an airplane wing for, for Boeing, right? um, you're not going to have the time and money to build you know, 10 different prototypes for wings because uh, that's just going to be a huge waste of, of money. Um, you would definitely know. And so if you if you built those 10 wings and you put them in an and you put them in a wind tunnel and you ran the test, you would definitely know which of those 10 wings would perform the best. It's just that getting to that point is kind of way too costly and time consuming to ever ever really be practical. Okay. Um, and so to kind of fill this void in between this kind of uh, analytical approach and experimental, we have computational approach, right? Where it's similar to the analytical approach where we're looking to solve the governing equations. You know, we're not we're not actually trying to physically do anything, but instead of instead of solving these by hand, uh, we use computers to perform these calculations for us. And so you kind of get kind of the best of both worlds, where you can handle very complex situations, but you can do it in a way that's kind of very kind of inexpensive and kind of very quick relative to running an experiment. Okay. The caveat to computational approach is that these are often often be very tricky to set up, um, and they require you know quite complex theory to to really understand. So that's 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 what we're going to be doing in, in this class. Okay, so I have a couple of examples here, and so uh, you know, one example. Let's say that you're working in structural mechanics. So so let's say that you're designing a bridge, you're designing a building, right? Uh, a lot of the a lot of that design probably relies on a structural beam like like this. Okay. 
Okay. If you have just a, a simple beam uh, with a simple loading, you know, um, this is a this is a simple enough situation that you can solve by hand. But if you were to design a, a whole building like this, so this this you know maybe like a like a parking structure or a scaffolded building of some kind, right? This would be something where you know um, practically speaking, it would be you know impo first of all impossible to build because uh, you would never be able to build a structure like this to test in, in full, right? Uh, and it would be almost impossible to do this by hand just because of the complexity of the of the geometry. Uh, but if you were to run a finite element simulation on this, you'd be able to get the result that you need uh, to test whether your design is feasible or not. Okay. Uh, the same can be done for heat transfer, right? So this is thermal analysis. So if you have heat transfer through a wall, you know, if you have a simple kind of geometry like this, this is something that you can do by hand. But if you were to do something more complicated, like let's say the thermal analysis on a turbine rotor, something like this, um, you know, you would need computation to do this, uh, to do this for you. And then finally, you know, the same can be said about fluid mechanics. So this is kind of something up my own alley. So I, I do mostly fluid mechanics simulations. Uh, if you were to do a complicated geometry like this, and so this right here is what you're looking at is actually a surgical geometry. And so this is a, a person who underwent um, basically open heart surgery. And what they had was they had this kind of, uh, they call it a shunt um, to kind of redirect blood from one area of the body to, to another. Um, and so this is actually from one of my colleagues. And so this is a, this is a collaborator that, that I used to work with. Um, and he ran a simulation to show that this surgery right here is, is, is actually pretty successful. Okay. okay, so that's so that's kind of the idea. And so the idea with FEA is, is to take complicated situations, um, you know, uh, model it in a computer, use FEA to transform the governing equations into a form that you can actually solve by. Uh, or solved by computer. Uh, any questions on on this so far? Yeah. How was this done before we did computers? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So before computers, you know, uh, we relied a lot on kind of a combination of of hand calculations and experiments. And so, you know, even though you wouldn't be able to run an experiment on a huge building like this, maybe you run a scaled down experiment on something. Uh, maybe just like one one floor of, of the building or one particular beam, right? Loaded in a very particular way. You would then take that you would then take that data from that experiment and you'd run it into like a like a like a hand calculation model, right? And you, you can use those hand calculations to kind of scale it up to kind of a larger larger building. So it was a lot of kind of you know using kind of both 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 worlds of kind of analytical and experimental to kind of kind of paint the picture of, of kind of a bigger a bigger design. Um, but yeah, but the but but even then, you know, there's a lot of difficulties with doing that. It was still very time consuming, and so computers have kind of you know bridged that gap and allowed kind of you know allowed engineers to really iterate on a lot of designs much more quickly than they did kind of back then. Okay, um, so the other thing I wanted to go over today is what I call the finite element process. So this is this is something we're going to talk about a lot in this class, right? Uh, so like I mentioned, you know, this class is focused a lot more on the theory, right? Uh, and so to understand the theory, you know, you have to kind of understand the process in which, you know, we need to follow uh, to do a finite element analysis. Right? Um, so the first step is to discretize. So this, uh, so this step, um, you'll often hear me call it meshing. And so the idea behind meshing is to take a complicated geometry like this and then uh, break it up into lots and lots of simpler shapes, okay? A lot of times these shapes are something that's, um, you know, like a, like a square, like a, like a box, like a triangle, like a tetrahedron, right? Um, and each individual shape in this, uh, in this mesh is called an element. Uh, and, that's and that's how we get the name finite element analysis, okay? Uh, and we need to do this because, you know, uh, ultimately what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be solving these, these kind of very complicated partial differential equations uh, and that's very difficult to do, you know, for a, uh, you know, even for a computer on a, on an arbitrary complicated geometry. Okay? So the first step is actually to take your complicated geometry, you know, break up into simpler shapes, right? Because, you know, we may not be able to, you know, solve the, uh, the structural equations on a, on a flange like this, right? But we can do it for a box, right? Um, and if we can do it for one box, then we can do it for two boxes. If we can do it for two boxes, then we can do it for four. And we can do it for you know eventually up to hundreds, right? Um, and so that's that's kind of the idea with, with meshing. We're not going to get you know meshing. Meshing is a very interesting theory. 
uh, and, I, and I wish we had more time in this class. Maybe we might have time in the end in terms of talking about how do you, how do you actually get a mesh? I, I don't think I've ever talked about that in the class before, uh, but I think it might be interesting to know soon. We may have, we may, we may try to make time at the end of the class, uh, especially because we're meeting this week. I thought I'd still be on spread this week, so we have more extra time than I thought. Okay. The next step in the FEA process is to um, uh, what I call assume a functional representation. Okay. Um, and so FEA is, is, is a little bit unique compared to kind of a traditional way to solve uh, an equation because when you, when you, usually when you're given an equation to solve, so let's say I, I give you like a differential equation, you know, you don't really make any assumptions in terms of what the solution looks like. You just solve the problem, right? And then once you get to the end, the solution is just what it, what it is. Right? Um, FEA works a little bit backwards in the sense that, you know, in order to actually solve these complicated equations, you first need to make an assumption of what the solution looks like. Um, and what I mean by that is that you have to make an assumption in terms of the functional form of the solution, right? Uh, and so in this case, you know, what we're assuming, uh, it's a little bit hard to tell. There's a lot going on in this diagram here, but, but these, but these functions here are basically our assumption. And what we're assuming is that our solution is a linear function. So it basically looks like a linear polynomial, right? Um, and so, you know, FEA makes that assumption first. And so it says that, you know, we're going to assume we have this complicated equation. We're going to assume that our solution looks like a linear polynomial, and we're going to find the best linear polynomial that solves this equation. Okay. All right. So I know I know this step here. You know, it's it right now. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is something we're going to go over a lot in the class. But you know, I I, I want to kind of mention it right now, that the way you solve an FEA problem is reverse. In that you know, you you assume a form first, and then you. The rest of what you do depends on that assumption. Okay? A little bit backwards in kind of how you, you solve it. And the names of these functions are called shape functions, which are you know what we'll we'll, we'll get very familiar with this. Uh, this. Okay, <clears throat> the next step is called assembly. Okay, uh, and so the idea with assembly is to take all those little elements and all those little functional representations and to build uh, what I call a matrix system of equations. Um, because one, there's, if there's one thing that computers are really, really, really good at, you know, computers are really, really good at algebra. Okay. Uh, and so if you can take, um, any problem, um, it doesn't even have to be finite elements. And so a lot of actually artificial intelligence and machine learning work this way too. And so if you can take kind of a real life problem or a really complicated math problem and turn it into an algebra problem, um, you know, a computer is going to be really, really good at, at solving. Okay. Granted, you know, these algebraic systems, you know, what you're seeing here is a system of five equations and five unknowns, right? So we have a five by five square matrix, right? This, this normally you can solve by hand, you know, five by five matrix is not that bad. But, you know, when I say that, you know, we're, we're forming linear systems or linear equations, you know, usually these systems are on the orders of like millions of equations. So you have maybe like 3 million equations and 3 million of them. Um, and so if you, if you think about a system like that, you know, that's, that's practically impossible for a human to solve. Um, not that it's actually impossible. It's just, you know, a waste of time, but, you know, a computer looks at that and they say, you know, 3 million equations, 3 million unknowns, you know, computers are built for that, right? Because the way you solve algebraic problems is you do a lot of really repetitive, simple calculations and computers really excel at those things. Okay. And so this part, this part of the finite element process is to basically assemble that system. So that's why we call it assembly. It's to take, you know, your, your, your system, take your mesh, take your functional assumptions, um, and turn it into a gigantic linear system that the computer can solve. Okay. So the bulk of the theory, the bulk of what we're going to focus on for this class is going to be these two steps right here. Right? So how do you take, how do you go from your finite elements? What do you assume for the solution? And then how do you assemble the linear system? The next step here is to apply boundary conditions. And so if you've taken FEA before, this, this should be a familiar step, right? Boundary conditions are basically um, um, specifications in terms of how the simulation is gonna behave at certain areas of your, of your model, okay? So uh, physically, this takes the form of kind of what we call constraints and loads, okay? Um, and so if you used ANSYS before, you know those terms should be familiar to you. Uh, if not, you know, we're, we're gonna go over it, so no problem, okay? Um, and so what we're going to do kind of extra in this class is we're going to talk about what that actually means mathematically in terms of the, you know, linear system that I talked about in the previous slide. Okay. Right. Okay. 
So once you've done all that, right? Um, you've done a, you've done a lot of math up to this point. Um, now it, now it comes to actually solve the system, and this is actually the easiest part for me because you know from here you just let the computer do everything. And so you, you've done all the work, you've constructed this linear system, it's, it's probably several thousands of equations uh, um, big, right? Uh, but the computer's good at this. And so now you can kind of hand this off to the computer. And you say, all right, computer, I've done my job. Now you do your job, okay? And uh, you know, we're gonna be working with MATLAB a lot in this, uh, in this class. And so you, know, we're gonna, you would basically just write one line of code and the computer will solve, solve it for you, okay? So this is, this is, this is the easy, by far the easiest part of everything that even though it's you know technically the most demanding, but you know, the computer handles most of that for us. Okay. All right, and then the last step is a step I call post-processing. So once you've run your simulation, once you've done the calculation, now you can actually look at your results uh, and interpret them and 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 kind of do your engineering analysis and design. Okay. So this is kind of when the engineering you know actually starts to happen. That's when you start to tinker with the design. That's when you start to you know change things you know um, and test things and. Uh, but everything up until this point was, you know, how do we actually obtain the simulation results? How do we actually, you know, run this? Uh, okay. Um, so I wanted to run through that. So I, I know a lot of that was really fast. Um, and, you know, and we're definitely going to go through each of those steps in a lot more detail throughout the class. Uh, but I wanted to kind, of, to kind of just give you an overview of kind of, you know, when I say FBA, you know, this is kind of what I'm referring to. At least for this class. Any questions on, on this so far? Okay, um, so one thing that I, I also want to emphasize, you know, um, just because, you know, we're going to be using FEA a lot in this class, you know, we're going to be coding up our own FEA codes and, and things like that, right? I want to remind you that FEA is just a tool, okay? Um, and, and in a lot of ways, you know, it's not that much different than a tool that you would find in, 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 in your tool shop. So like a saw or a calculator, right? So all of these are, are tools for your, for your for engineering. I think when you have you know a very sophisticated tool like FEA, which can produce kind of these very beautiful kind of images, it's you kind of get into the into the mindset of kind of trust, of putting a little bit too much trust in your FEA, right? and that's dangerous. And so I, I want I want to always kind of remind you to kind of look at your FEA results with a critical eye, because right? your FEA can be wrong, right? And so you could you could set up things wrong, or the computer can can make mistakes. And so it's important to kind of always have a have a have a critical eye. In particular, you know, in terms of human input, right? There's there's a lot that you have to do to actually set up an FEA problem. Um, there's a there's a there's a saying that we have in, in this world, which goes, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And so, if you don't know what you're doing and setting up the problem, then the results that you're going to get are practically going to be useless. But they're not going to be physically realistic. They're not going to be physically consistent. Um, and so, it's important to kind of spot, you know, what those you know garbage results would would look. Because a lot of times the computer's not going to tell you. Your computer's not going to tell you a lot of times when your simulation results are wrong. Um, it's just going to do what it's instructed to do. Right? And so it's important to kind of always have a good eye for these things to know. You know when you're when you're you know when you're doing these simulations. Um, you know to know kind of to spot you know what's what's wrong and what's and what's right. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's kind of just an overview of the course in terms of the the content. And so I wanted just to kind of go over the uh, um, kind of the, the roadmap of the course, okay? So we're here, we're starting here on the left. So we're here at the course introduction and I, I've kind of broken up the class into kind of um, four main modules. So we have the introduction, which we're gonna do this week. And then we're gonna move on to a technique called the direct stiffness method. Uh, we'll spend, we'll kind of be there until about maybe the midpoint of the semester. Uh, then the next point, the next part of the, uh, of the class is called um, you know, kind of more traditional FEA. And so I call that kind of FEA solutions of differential equations. And so there, you know, we'll, we'll actually start to get into the uh, into the nitty gritty of, you know, taking a, a differential equation and, and breaking it down with FEA. And then we'll move on to the final phase uh, of the course in terms of, you know, practical considerations. And if you want to expand this a bit more, one thing is hidden up here, okay? Here are some of the kind of the finer points that we're going to cover. And kind of most importantly, you know, you're going to see two colored boxes up here. Okay? And so these are the main two softwares that we're going to be using throughout the course. Um, so we do, we'll be doing a little bit of ANSYS, although, you know, not, not much at all. And so we're, I'm just basically just going to introduce the concept of ANSYS. 
uh, just to kind of give you the idea of, in terms of what the end goal for FDA will look like. Uh, but we're going to spend the majority of this class in math. So we're going to be writing a lot of our own codes. You know, we're going to be, you know, uh, writing around FDA codes, testing it, plotting things in, in MATLAB. And so, you know, this is very much kind of a theory-based foundational class in FDA. Uh, we don't focus that much on the on the application. So if you're, if you're more interested in, in, in learning about ANSYS, um, I have another 500-level um, um, FDA course that's 540. Uh, so that one focuses I'm, I, exclusively on ANSYS. Uh, but this, but this course is a bit different because we focus more on kind of the theoretical background. So, okay. All right, and so I know you know um, mentioning MATLAB, you know, I know causes you know a lot of people a lot of anxiety. Uh, so don't worry, you know, I'm I'm not going to just throw you to the wolves. So you know, uh, we're going to build out the MATLAB slowly. Uh, we're going to have review, and so I think we have you know it's it's part of the course introduction. I think we're going to do it next week, and so we'll review our MATLAB knowledge. Uh, we'll make sure that you know we're we're all kind of up to date on that, and then once we actually start to get into the coding, so we're going to code some direct stiffness problems. We're going to code on this part as well. Your final project is going to involve coding as well, right? We'll we'll do each of those kind of slowly. And I, ha I have lots of examples that kind of help you out with that. So, you know, it's it's you know, I I think there there is an expectation for me to to at least have you be exposed to MATLAB previously to know what it is. Um, but I know that kind of everyone's kind of at a different place with their programming skills. So I definitely plan to do a lot of review, uh, give you a lot of examples with the MATLAB, um, you know, just so that everyone can kind of feel comfortable. Okay. And in fact, you know, one of my goals with this class in particular is to, you know, for you guys to come out of it, you know, with more confidence in your MATLAB programming than hopefully than what you came in. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a sub goal. Okay. Uh, any questions on, on this? When do you think uh, 540 will be offered in next? Um, so, okay. So I think the last time I taught it was fall 2022. So it should be coming up soon. So I want to say, um, I want to say next semester, but if not next semester, then the following fall for sure. Yeah. Usually they're on, usually they're on a rotation. So um, 410, 540, 541. And so now 541s. Okay, um, so you know you may be wondering, you know, why why learn background knowledge at all, right? And so because I think you know most people just want to use ANSYS, and and that's understandable. So I I, I totally understand. Um, but you know, learning learning background knowledge in FDA is is also a very essential skill, right? Um, because you know when you have a tool, especially a tool that's as complex and powerful as FDA, you know you really need to kind of understand it if you're going to apply this in, in a professional capacity. Because uh, it's, it's it's one thing to use a software. It's one thing to kind of know where the buttons are and to kind of you know push those buttons and and get and get results. It's another thing to kind of really understand why you're doing those steps that you're doing. Um, and if anything goes wrong, if if you're getting errors or you're getting kind of um, you know something's not going right, something's not doing what you expect, right? It's it's another thing to really have the background knowledge and the uh, and the training needed to kind of debug those issues, get past them, uh, so that you can produce results that are wrong. Okay, because uh, the reality is, you know, uh, a lot of times you look at FEA and, and people think of it as kind of this like magic tool where like, you know, it, it, you can perform analysis, um, crazy analysis and, and it'll give you results, but it's not going to work all the time. You know, there's, there's situations where FEA is, is not appropriate and it's, 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 you're, it's, you're better off doing maybe a hand calculation or maybe doing an experiment uh, or even in, in a case where FEA is appropriate, you know, making sure that you set it up properly can be really tricky, can be a lot more complicated than, than what you initially thought. Uh, and so having this background knowledge is really essential to really kind of getting past those, those issues, okay? Um, and, you know, for you guys especially, because, you know, you guys are grad students. And so when you leave this class, you know, you're going to be considered, you know, or, or companies are going to look at you and, and think of you as, as having, you know, a, a certain degree of expertise in, in finite elements. And so, you know, with that, with that kind of, um, you know, power comes responsibility as well, right? As, you know, Marvel Comics would always say. Um, and so, you know, part of that responsibility is, is kind of you can, knowing the background knowledge and, and taking a course like this to really kind of understand uh, the tools, you know, understand our tools limitations, mm -hmm. what it can be used for and, and using it in kind of a proper way. Okay. okay, so far as an example, you know, for a vet, right? And so, you know, 
when you when you take your when you take your pet to the vet, you know, you expect the vet to be able to do what I call kind of procedural skills, right? So things like giving shots to animals, taking blood samples, you know, performing like a eye exam. But you also need to you also expect them to know kind of conceptual knowledge as well. Um, first of all, you know, why they're giving you shots, right? They're not just, you know, uh, injecting things into your cat for no reason. Um, you know, if your animal is sick, you know, uh, interpreting their behavior, maybe um, telling you what to do, change their diet, right? And so all of this is kind of like background information that we kind of implicitly expect the vet to know, right? And for something like FDA, it's, it's, it's the same thing, right? And so just like how we expect, you know, vets to have this knowledge, you know, the expectation is, is you know, for all of you to have this knowledge too, if you're going to be using FDA, um, in your professional life. All right, and then another thing that I just want to emphasize, just, just you know, I, I want to get this expectation out of the way, um, just because I know I know a lot of you are, are, are really hoping to learn more ANSYS. You know, I do have an ANSYS class, it's, it's just not offered this, this semester. And 541 is, is really kind of focused on the theory, okay? Um, and so at the end, and so I'll tell you what the final project is right now. And so and the final project is for this class, is I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a problem, right? Um, it's going to be a thermal problem just because that one's a bit easier than structural, right? And and what I want you to do is I want you to write MATLAB code from scratch to basically solve this problem using finite elements. Okay? Um, it sounds scary and it sounds very daunting, you know, because uh, you think you know FDA code, you know, I think your ending code is probably going to be about you know 200 300 lines depending depending on how you, you code it. Um, that sounds scary, but you know we're 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 going to get there. We're going to build that. We're going to build up our knowledge to get to that point. And I'll tell you that you know if you know when you do finish the project and it works and you get that color contour that you're supposed to, you know you feel it feels amazing. Right? I remember the first time I, I did it, and I'm like, I feel like a god right now. I can go. I can go to anything. Uh, you're not that quite at that level, but you know it's it's a great feeling. And and you know believe it or not, you know you may I think. A lot of people may not see the connection between writing MATLAB code and, and using ANSYS, right? Um, but they but they support each other, believe it or not, right? Um, so when ANSYS is giving you issues or you're having problems with meshing, you know, you can turn to a class like this to kind of really help you get over the hump, right? And, and honestly, something like this, you know, a class like this is kind of really what separates what I consider to be kind of graduate knowledge of FEA versus like an undergraduate knowledge. Because right? uh, I also have my undergraduate FEA class, that's 410, right? Um, and in, in 410, you know, we learn a lot, but I think what really separates, I think, you know, and you guys graduate students from, from that is, is having this kind of intense knowledge of the background information, right? Um, and that's, that's what you're going to get. Right? So it's, it's, it's going to be hard, you know, it's, it, I don't, I, I try not to sugarcoat things. It's, it's going to be a lot of math. It's going to be a lot of programming. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit intense, but I think, you know, at the end, at the end of this, I think, you know, you guys are going to be. Uh, really satisfied and really happy with kind of what you've learned, um, not only with FEA, but a lot of the other kind of skills that you learned along the way. Uh, the program. Right. Okay, uh, so the next thing, the next thing I'm going to cover in the class is the syllabus, and so we're going to go over kind of all the policies in, in the course, all my office hours, things like that, uh, and then the last thing I want to do today is go over the course website, uh, but before I do that, are there just any questions I, I can answer about the course uh, introduction? Okay. All right. So let's go over the syllabus. <clears throat> okay. Um, starting with office hours. So um, like I mentioned before, my office is in the other building. And so if you, if you visit my office on the fifth floor here, I'm not there anymore. Um, I don't even know who's there. anymore. Um, but it's not me. And so, you know, if you want to see me, my office is, is on the other side of the quad. Uh, I'm, primar I'm primarily here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so uh, Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays, I, I typically work from home. Um, and so my Monday office hours are going to be Zoom only, okay? Um, but with that said, you know, even on Tuesdays and Thursdays, if you're not able to um, to make them in person, I do have the Zoom option available as well, okay? Uh, and for you guys especially too, because, like, you know, I know you guys are grad students. I, I know I know a lot of you guys are working during the day. I, I know that all these office hours are, are probably times that are difficult for you guys to meet. Um, and so, you know, um, if these times don't work out for you and you want to meet with me, you want to talk about your project, your homework, or, or anything in the class, uh, just shoot me an email. Uh, I'm usually free in, in the evenings on Mondays and Wednesdays as, as well. And so we can kind of set up an appointment. Maybe we can kind of combo it with several other people as well. So, you know, even, even if these times don't work for you, um, you know, I'm also available by appointment. Just, just, just let me know. Uh, but just for this semester, just because, you know, all, all my courses are kind of stacked on Tuesdays, Thursdays. So, you know, 
it kind of worked out, you know, well with the timing for that, but I'm also available outside of this. So just, just, just let me know. Um, and so office hours, typically what I say is that office hours are used for discussing, you know, if you're, if you're confused about anything for the course content, um, you want me to go over kind of the, the theory again or do another example, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to do that. Um, if you have questions on the homework, uh, if you have questions on the exams, the projects, you know, any, any question that you have related to the course, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help you with office hours. So, so definitely, you know, don't be afraid to go. All right, course learning objectives. And so, you know, if, if you know me, you know, I, I, I love my learning objectives. So, you know, not only do we have kind of daily learning objectives, but we have learning objectives for the entire course as well. Okay? And so what I hope is that by the end of the course, and so by the time we reach the middle of May, um, you know, you'll be able to do everything on this list, all five items, okay? All right. Uh, let's talk deliverables. And so, um, you know, these are all the main things that you're going to be turning in for this class. Um, so there are seven homework assignments. Um, one of them is already out there. I know some of you have already submitted it, which is good. Uh, we have two midterm exams and one final project. Okay. Um, the lowest homework grade will be dropped um, just because I know just life gets crazy during the semester. And so, you know, it, it's hard to kind of stay on top of all the deadlines. Um, so I want to give you guys a little bit of flexibility in, in terms of that. So if you miss if you miss a homework assignment, it's not a you know it's not a death sentence, right? You, you're, there's still flexibility for that. Uh, but still, you know, please do them all. And so I, I I put a lot of thought into the homework assignments. Um, I write them myself. And so you know um, you know if if anything you know just to prepare for the midterm exams, you know doing the homeworks is is good for that. <laughs> uh, just because the same person that's writing the homework assignment is the same person writing the exams. Which is me, and so if you if you if you're if you get used to kind of my style of, of answering questions, you kind of get used to kind of what I'm looking out for, especially in the questions. That's that's good preparation for the exam, okay? Uh, and especially for you for you as well uh, for our planning to take the comprehensive exam. You know, I'm I'm most likely going to be the one to write the comprehensive exam questions for this class as well. And so you know, getting used to my style of questions and 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 everything will help you out for that in the future. Uh, the midterm exams, they won't be cumulative. So each midterm exam will probably will focus on, on primarily kind of a, a, a span of four to five weeks of content. Um, so that's kind of most relevant for the second exam. So the second exam is not going to be, you know, I'm not going to test you on anything from the first exam. Um, but the final project will kind of will kind of require you to pull all the knowledge that you kind of gained throughout. So that's that's important. Okay, and then here are the dates. And so uh, I originally planned these dates um, with the strike in mind, um, but I think we're just gonna we're just gonna keep the date just because everything is kind of published already. So, um, so there may be there you know these dates may be kind of you know we may take an exam maybe a week after we finish the content for this, but that's but that's okay. I think that's that's fine. So the first midterm exam is planned for Tuesday, March twelfth. Uh, the second midterm exam is planned for Thursday, April twenty fifth. And then the final report or your final project, and that includes your code um, and the report, are is due on Monday, May twentieth. Right. And if you look at the calendar, you know the due date for the final project is actually going to be the Monday after finals week. Um, just because I know, you know, I know a lot of you guys are, are working pretty hard during finals week, have final exams and stuff, other projects to work on. So I try to give you a little bit of flexibility of giving you kind of that one extra weekend uh, and that one extra Monday to kind of finish things up and, and turn. Um, all right, any questions on, on this so far? All right, let's talk uh, grade breakdown. So this is kind of the breakdown of the grades. Uh, so the homework assignments, um, I primarily grade those based on completion. Um, and so those are gonna be worth 10%. Um, I don't know what this bullet point is. I think I think I kind of copied this incorrectly. So um, the last homework project, well, it's, it's not gonna be a small project. It's gonna be a normal. I think I kind of left this in there. Um, yeah, don't don't pay attention to that. Okay. Uh, the final project is going to be worth forty percent, and collectively, both midterm exams are going to be worth fifty percent up here. Okay, and if you'll notice here, I I kind of broke it down. So one midterm exam is going to be worth thirty percent of your grade, and the other midterm exam is going to be worth twenty percent. Okay, um, and so um, the way that works is that you know between your two midterm exams. Which, whichever midterm exam you score higher on, I'm gonna count that as a higher percentage of your grade. So let's say on, on the first midterm, let's say you score, you do really good. Let's say you get 44 out of 50, okay? Then for the second midterm, let's say that you don't do as well. Let's say you get 37 out of 50, right? 
And so that 44 out of 50 is going to be worth 30% of your grade. And then your, um, your other midterm will be worth 20%. Okay. Um, and I do this, you know, mostly just to kind of give you some flexibility because, you know, midterm exams, you know, they are cumulative, but they're still just kind of a moment in time. So, you know, I know a lot of things can happen, you know, before midterm, you know, people get sick, you know, you, you, uh, work might be crazy, you, know, you, may, you may not be able to prepare as much, right? And so, you know, I want to give you the flexibility where, you know, let's say the first, usually it happens for the first midterm, you know, maybe you don't do as well as, as, you, as you want. Um, you can kind of make that up by the second midterm. So let's say you do really well in the second midterm, that's going to be a higher percentage of your grade than, than the first midterm. Um, and, you know, this, this policy here is, is only meant to, to help you, right? So, you know, um, and so, you know, it's, it's just to kind of give you some flexibility. All right, and so once all the grades are in, um, I assign letter grades based on this breakdown here. I think this is fairly standard. Um, you know, um, A's, A minuses, B's, B pluses, things like that. Uh, I do round, and so if you're at like a 92.5, I do round that up to an A, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so I do all that automatically uh, as well. Okay, um, so I think fair. So I think for this class, a fairly straightforward grade breakdown. The only wrinkle is the kind of the higher and lower grades. Okay. Um, any questions uh, on this? Yes. Uh, around what week are we going to start going more into detail with the projects? Probably around uh, right before spring break. Yeah. So around week ten, week eleven. Yeah. So I I try to give you about a month and a half to work on that. That's usually that's usually my goal. All right, textbook. Um, so the textbook's not required. Um, I, I usually don't require a textbook because you know, even even ten years after I've stopped being a student, I still have a burning hatred towards textbook companies and how much they charge you. So you know, I don't require the textbook. I, I post all my lecture notes, and so those lecture notes, uh, what I at least what I hope is everything that you need to to um, to uh, do well in the class. Uh, but sometimes you know, if if you want to have a reference, you know, let's say that you want to pursue FEA even more. Um, in, in more graduate school or, or say you want to have it for your office. You know, these are the, two, the these are the two textbooks that I use. Um, they're pretty good. Um, I, I own both of them. Um, and I, and I, paid, I actually paid for them. Um, so that's how much I like them. Okay. And so the first one is a, a first course in FEA um, by Logan, fourth edition. I think this is in 2006. And so I think they've, they've probably written a few more editions since then, but I use the fourth edition. Not that the fourth edition is any better, it's just I don't want to buy the fifth edition and beyond. So you know, that's just the one I happen to own first. Uh, the next one is by Kotromanos, uh, Fundamentals of FEA, Linear FEA Analysis. This one's a little bit more of a modern book. Um, this is kind of more traditional FEA. So this is a, a Wiley book from 2017. Okay. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, you don't need the textbooks for anything. So all the homework assignments I write myself. So you'll have the full problem statements and I post all my lecture notes as well. So you don't need it for that. Um, these are only, I only, I only list these in case you want to have them for your own reference. So let's say that you want to have more example problems. You want to see the theory kind of covered in more depth. Um, you can pick up the textbooks for those. Uh, but other than that, you know, you don't, I don't require it for this class. Okay. Uh, and I always tell people that, you know, you should never pay full price for a textbook, you know, try to find a cheap version, a used version, um, maybe, you know, a version from the high seas, if you can find one, you know, that's probably the best one, but you know, try not to try not to pay full price for this unless someone else is paying. For it. If your company's paying for it, then who cares? Okay, uh, course website. Um, so I use Canvas for our course website, and so I think a lot of you have probably visited already. Um, so basically, all the content that I produce for the class will be posted there. Um, so that includes lecture notes, lecture slides, homework assignments, homework solutions, exam solutions, study guides, um, starter codes, example codes. Um, you know, basically any. Anything that I produce for the class, any content will be on Canvas. Right? Uh, all the lecture recordings will be on Canvas as well. So you'll have, there'll be links to YouTube that have my lecture recordings as well. We'll go over that in a bit, okay? Uh, and I also use Canvas as my kind of my primary way to communicate with you all as well, okay? So, in, as, so announcements will be made on Canvas and I think those are automatically. All right, and so we have uh, some miscellaneous course uh, policies and so, um, I start with homeworks. And so for homeworks, uh, I do accept late homework. And so if you miss a deadline by a couple of days, you know, still turn it in, that's that's fine. Uh, but I do I do have to dock some points. And so my policy is that each day that a homework assignment is late, uh, I dock 10% off the maximum points. Okay? And so if you're two days late with the homework, then the maximum you can get is 80%. Okay? 
uh, regrades. And so I do um, I do make mistakes in grading, uh, despite what some people may tell you. I don't I don't do it on purpose. Um, I just make mistakes sometimes in adding the points, uh, or maybe I, I'm a little bit too harsh on grading a, an exam problem. You know, I've I've, I've done that before. Right? Um, and so you know, I'm I'm always happy to look at at things um, again. And so if you want me to regrade something, or if you want me to you know um, add a, uh, the points correctly, you know, just let me know. Uh, the only limitation that I have is that you have to do this within a week after I give something back. Okay? Um, for emails, um, you know, I'm usually pretty fast with emails. And so, you know, definitely feel free to email me at any time. Uh, the only thing I ask is that when you email me, try to include EGME 541 in the subject line. Because uh, I get a lot of emails. And so I'm, I'm teaching three different classes this semester. Um, I also do advising as well. So, you know, I get a lot of emails for lots of different reasons. You know, the school likes to send a lot of trash emails as well. So, you know, I have to sift through all that. So if you put EGME 541 in the title, you know, it, it kind of really helps me kind of zero in on, on my students and to kind of make sure I, I answer you in a time in a timely manner. So um, that would help me out. Okay, uh, academic dishonesty. So, so you know, you guys are all grad students. And so, you know, I, I, I don't feel like I need to spend a lot of time on this, but, you know, um, our school has very strict policies on, on academic dishonesty. And, you know, this, this ranges from, you know, things from like copying homework assignments from somebody else, um, you know, copying off someone in the exam, um, you know, using AI to write your reports, using AI to write your code, um, paying someone to write your, your report or code. And so, you know, there's anything that's not kind of you doing the work yourself um, constitutes as academic dishonesty. And, you know, we have strict policies on that. So, you know, at the very least, you know, these uh, can result in a zero on, on an assignment uh, or if it's on something serious like an exam or a project, you know, this could result in kind of just an automatic F for the course uh, and a referral to student content. Okay. So I'd rather not have to do this. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of not fun for anybody. And so, you know, please, please, please just don't do it. Um, but I will say this, that, you know, I, you know, when I, when I, when I started working here, you know, I've I've always felt, and I still feel this way today, that my my job here primarily is to help you guys succeed and learn and and take skills and to be successful in your careers. Okay, um, and I know that you know things can happen during a semester that are outside a lot of times outside your control. So things happen in your life uh, that make it difficult to focus on studies, and you know you may feel that you have to do things to kind of catch up to the course uh, or to do well and. and I know there's a tremendous amount of pressure on you guys to, you know, to keep your grades up and things like that. Okay. If at any point in the class where you feel like you're struggling or you feel like you're not keeping up with the class or just, just, you know, you come to class and you think, you know, I'm teaching French for whatever reason, right. Cause you don't understand anything. Um, please, please come talk to me. And I, you know, I promise you that I'm, I'm not going to judge you. You know, I'm not going to, you know, you know, ridicule you, criticize you or anything like that. Right. My job is to help you succeed. And whether that be to, you know, you know, helping you develop a study plan, you know, in terms of, you know, what, what can we do to get you back on track? You know, whether it be, you know, maybe moving deadlines around to maybe work around your work schedule, maybe you just have a kind of a really hard time, um, you know, whatever, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot that I can do to kind of help you get back on track. But if you, if you kind of cross that line and, and, and you, you know, you copy off someone or you use AI or do something like that, you know, at that point, there's, there's, there's not much that I can do because we have, you know, we have very strict policies. Okay. So the only thing that I ask is that, you know, if you are struggling, you know, if you feel like you're not doing in, in, as well in the class as you should, you know, please come talk to me. Right. And, and so, you know, we can make an appointment, we can talk and I promise I'll do everything I can to help. That's, that's, that's what I feel like I'm here to do. That's, that, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm paying for. So, um, you know, please, please come talk to me. So, uh, and so we've reached the end of the slides. Uh, and so the last thing I want to um, let you know about is um, homework zero. Uh, so this is the first homework assignment. So this is the, what I call the email introductions. Uh, and so the only thing you have to do to complete this assignment is to send, send me an email introducing yourself. Okay? And just for complete, and just for sending me an email, you know, you could, you could have almost nothing in the email and I'll give you full credit, right? Um, because, you know, it's the start of a new semester. You know, we're going to be together for the next 16 weeks. You know, I want to have, you know, I want to get to know you guys. I want to, I want to know kind of what your goals are, uh, especially for my grad students. But I think you guys have a better idea in terms of, you know, what you want to get out of this class, what you want to get out of your graduate degree, what skills you want to take to, to industry, what skills you want to take to your workplace. 
you know, what kinds of companies you want to work for. You know, I think you guys have a better idea about it than, than, than I think a lot of other students. So, you know, I want to, I want to learn that stuff. So, you know, so, so tell me, right. So I have these four questions here. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to answer these four questions. I just kind of use them as a guide. Uh, but if you're having trouble kind of thinking about what to say, you know, you can use these questions as, as a guide. Okay. Uh, and of course, you know, number two is a question that I, I pay attention to a lot. <clears throat> Um, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of, you know, how I, how I design this, this course. And so if there's a particular thing that you want to learn or a particular, you know, thing that you want to see, um, I can, I can, I can work that in. And so, you know, let me know. And so if there's a lot of people that want to learn about, let's say meshing, right? Uh, we can, we can spend, you know, a week or two talking about how mesh, how meshing algorithms work and maybe right or wrong, right? And so that's, that's something that's, that would be cool to do. Okay. Uh, and I, I also pay attention to number three, right? Uh, so any worries or concerns that you may have um, before the class, right? um, you know, I think especially after today, you know, I, I, we talked a lot about math today. We're going to be doing a lot of math, so I'm sure that's on a lot of people's mind. And so if you if you have any concerns about that, any worries about that, you know, let me know, and uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll do everything I can to make sure that your concerns are addressed throughout the class. Uh, or maybe it's not that. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's like, you know, I, I heard Doctor Trans an asshole, and I'm concerned that you know he's going to be an asshole. Right, just let me know, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll do my best not to be an asshole to you throughout the semester. Um, I, 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 I do that generally, but you know, if you let, you let me know, then I'll try to do it. I'll put extra attention, okay? Um, and even, you know, just your interest in hobbies, you know, I, I'm interested in, in, in what you guys like to do. And so, you know, just let me know. All right, and so the due date for this is gonna be next Friday. Um, you know, I, I think, like I mentioned before, I, I, I thought we weren't gonna meet until next week, and so, so that's why the due date is kind of a little bit far off. Um, but, you know, I thought, you know, it's, it's already published. I don't want to change it. And so, you know, the due date is, is next Friday. Um, but don't forget about it. I think it's kind of easy to say, like, oh, it's not due till then. I'll wait till then. But, you know, send me the email now. If you okay? And, uh, you know, if when you're emailing me, remember, you know, don't forget to include uh, eGimmy541 um, just to kind of help me out to kind of organize me. Um, any questions on the syllabus or just anything that we talked about so far? Yeah. Like projects, group projects, or individual? It's an individual project. Yeah. But with that said, you know, everyone's going to be working on the same code. And so I do encourage you to kind of work together with other people to develop the code. Um, you know, that doesn't mean just copy someone else's code, but you know, if you're if you're running into issues, you can definitely talk to you, talk to other people in the class to help you get through that. But everyone's going to write their own. The data and notes are shared on the yes, yeah, yeah. Every everything, all my lecture notes, everything will be shared. Okay, all right. So the last thing I want to go over today is actually the Canvas site. So just so you know how it's organized, um, it's not it's not fully there yet, just because you know I got a text at ten p.m. last night, so I didn't have time to to fully publish everything. Uh, but most of it's here. So, you know, I do want to kind of let you know how this, uh, how the how the website is organized. Okay. So if you go to the Canvas site, this is this is what you'll see. And so you'll see the name of the course. Um, you'll see my name. You'll see the lecture times. Um, everyone here knows that because you're here. So that's good. Uh, the physical location of the class is CS309. Uh, of course, you know, uh, for those of you on Zoom, you know, I, I will be streaming all my lectures on Zoom this semester. And so, um, you know, if you prefer to, to attend the lectures on Zoom, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, the only days that I require you to be here in person are the exam days, uh, which are only two. And so for all the other days of the uh, um, of the class, you can attend on Zoom. Uh, just because I know, you know, I know a lot of you are working. And so, you know, it just kind of works out better with your schedule. So, you know, I, I'd like to kind of keep that. that okay. All right. Next, we have a description of the course, uh, which you don't need to read because you just hear me, you just heard me talk for the last hour. Uh, here are the learning objectives. Okay. Uh, you scroll down a bit. Here is the syllabus. And so if you want to see kind of everything that we talked about today, it's it's here in the syllabus. Okay. Here are all the Zoom links. And so we have the Zoom link for the lecture, um, the Monday office hours, the Tuesday office hours, the Thursday office hours. Okay. And so if you want to attend any, any of these on Zoom, you can just click on click on these links here. Uh, next, we have the course outline, and so this is kind of the main thing that I, I don't have prepared yet. But you can see here that I have kind of a week by week breakdown in terms of what we're going to cover um, each of those weeks. Okay. 
Um, but the main the main thing that you'll see here is that, and and I'll I'll, I'll update this tomorrow most likely, is that each of these are going to be clickable, you know, as we go throughout the semester. So we're on week one, and so the week one page should be clickable. But you know, I didn't really have time to prepare it uh, just just yet. Thanks, but I, I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, so that's the home page, and so the main thing from the home page is you know the Zoom links and the course outline that you're going to be um, you know that you're going to be visiting quite a lot throughout the semester. All right. Any questions on the on the homepage of the Canvas site? Is there an official Discord? Uh, there's not. Um, no one. Uh, the Discord's kind of kind of been dying in the last few semesters, and so uh, I'm not going to make one this semester. All right. So the next tab is the announcements, and so you should, you know, I think everyone. I don't think there's anyone on the wait list, and so I think everyone should be on the Canvas site, um, and so you should be getting all my emails from the announcements. Next tab here is the assignments. And so this is a summary of all the homework assignments um, that you'll see. And so from here, you can click on the assignment. You can get more information in terms of kind of the, uh, um, in terms of the uh, requirements. Um, once we start doing problem sets, you can download the problem set from here as well. Okay. And you'll see things like the due date here. Okay. Oh, the due date, sorry. All right, next tab is your grades. And so once I grade things, you'll be able to see them here. Okay. And it'll compute your overall grade based on the weights that we talked about already. <clears throat> the next tab is the is the people's tab. I don't know how useful this is just because it's just a list of names. Um, I don't think it even has your email addresses, but it's there, I guess. Um, next, the next tab is uh, is is an important one. Is that's the files tab. And so basically, whenever I um, upload a file, whether it be a problem uh, a problem set, right now there's no problem sets. I'll put it here. Uh, all the starter code will be will go here. Okay. So all the example code starter code, I'll, I'll give it here. All the lecture notes are here as well. And so if you want to, you know, for whatever reason, read all the lecture notes for the next, you know, sixteen weeks, you can do that. But we'll be going over this throughout the course. Next tab is for the project. You know, there's nothing here, but you know, I'll put things there once once we get closer to the project and solutions. And so, you know, once I grade my once I grade the homeworks, I post the solutions, uh, which you can find in this folder here. Okay. And so, if you're looking for a specific file, you know, you can find it in this files tab here. Okay. okay. One last thing I, I want to show you. Uh, so I don't have these ready just yet, uh, but I do want to kind of show you what they look like, and that's the weekly pages. Okay, so let's look at week one. So this is week one from, from last time I taught this class. Okay. So uh, before each week, basically I'm gonna publish a, a weekly page, right? And you'll be able to click this from the homepage uh, where it, I'll have kind of a short description in terms of what we're gonna learn that week. We're gonna have a list of learning objectives, okay? Uh, so these are all the learning objectives that we're gonna learn from that week. Um, this part's the important part. And so all the lecture recordings will be here. And so right now, so I need to clean these up because these are all the lecture recordings from last time I taught this. And so if you click this here, it'll take you to YouTube and that's where I've uploaded my uh, my material. What are these suggestions? Earth's greatest mistress. Anyway, um, so right now these are these are last time. So this is from spring 2022. Um, so, you know, um, you know, if, if you want to view last time's lectures, you can. But basically, at the end of every lecture, I, I upload the lecture recordings to YouTube and I put the links here. And so you should be able to access them from here. Okay? And every week has two lectures. And so you'll be able to access lecture one and lecture two. Okay? And so if you ever want to uh, view a past lecture recorder, you can do that through the Canvas site. Okay. okay. Um, all the assignments will be here as well, all the homework assignments that are due soon. And so you'll be able to see a summary of that. And these are also clickable. So this will take you to the assignment page where you can download the problem set and get more information. And then all the files that you need for that week will be here as well. Okay? So all the lecture notes that we'll be going over that week and any, any other extra, you know, maybe starter code, example code will be posted here as well. Okay? So before each week, I, I try to get these pages up the Friday before the week. Uh, you know, I wasn't able to do it for today just because, you know, I didn't know I was working today until 10 p.m. last night. Uh, but I, I should be able to get this page up uh, tomorrow. And then the page for week two will be up um, by uh, Friday. This week. Okay. All right. So that is the course website. And so, you know, definitely, you know, if you haven't had a chance to definitely explore, see where everything is, 
Uh, any final questions today before we uh, wrap it up? Yeah. Yes, yes. And so the student version is free to download. So I'll, I'll send out instructions on how to download that um, probably probably later tonight. Um, I think we're gonna, we're probably going to do our first ANSYS activity on Thursday. And so we'll kind of get hit the ground running with that. Um, but then these lab computers also have ANSYS on them. And so when you're when you're in lab, you can just use the ANSYS here. But if you want to work on ANSYS at home, there's you have to download the student version, which I'll, I'll give you instructions. For. All right, so I'll, I'll stick around for a bit more. And so, you know, the lecture technically goes until 645. So I'll stick around until then. Um, if not, thank you guys for coming today. I, I know it was, it was a really last minute thing um, to kind of, you know, um, come back on really suddenly. So I appreciate you guys coming out today, uh, especially you guys on Zoom. Thank you guys for that. Uh, and then we'll start kind of in earnest on Thursday. So thank you guys for coming. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening and I will see you Thursday. No, I haven't. Uh, well, I mean, not yet. But do you mean like in here? I'm assuming like Yeah. Oh, Well, you mean like what I was talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it was a different. Yeah, this one. Yeah. You'll you That's all the difference. I have like a like a So you should be able to have a plan to go to the next So uh oh, okay. just uh, so just kind of keep got it. Uh you are definitely free to keep it on the uh until then. Uh but uh yeah, it should be should be hopefully resolved. Yeah. So even but even that Gotcha. Yeah. So, so even even if it fills up, I, I I try to add people from the student. And so for this class, I I add at least ten people. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. Okay. Great. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. So I, I I do do I do advise for research. Uh, let's maybe have a conversation. Um, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. And, and what's your name? Abdullah. Abdullah. Good to meet you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to know that I have worked yeah. on my before. Yeah. I'm skipping it. Yeah. So I try to like, figure out from my side sources from where I can learn, but do you have any recommendation for that? So, we, like any source from where I can learn? Like, yeah. So, um, I have, I have, uh, there, there is a kind of YouTube tutorials. And so, um, so I made these, I think, a couple of years ago. And first of all, don't worry. So, I know a lot of people actually come in without. Yeah, like your, it's on your channel? No, it's actually on the um, it's on the uh, mechanical engineering channel. Let's see, CSUF. Uh, so our MATLAB class is, is this one right here, EGME 205. And so if you search for a CSUF mechanical yeah. engineering channel, I can I can send, I can email you this link too. Um, so basically this this video series, the fuck is this guy? Um, I don't know. Oh, it's an oh, it's an ad. <laughs> so basically this video series goes over kind of a lot of the uh, kind of the core skills in, in MATLAB. Um, so you can kind of view, and they're all kind of like short short in uh, short in length. Um, but this is kind of a good like once you kind of have a good foundation, these are kind yeah, of good to kind of to kind of kind of kind of uh, reemphasize. Um, I would just you know if you search up just kind of just general math tutorials, 
that's kind of a good place to start. Do you have any other programming streams with like C++? No, actually. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. Yeah, I would just start. Uh, yeah, I, last, uh, for last semester, I had to use MATLAB for like, one of my math school, but it's just for, for the basic metrics, like matrix addition, subtraction. Gotcha. That's gotcha. all I learned, nothing else. That's, I think that's fine. So so we're, we're going to do a MATLAB review, I think, next week. And so during that MATLAB review, we'll go over all kind of like the basics. Uh, I think after that MATLAB review, I think it'd be good to kind of go through this channel right here. Because this, this one has kind of more examples and kind of goes into more in depth. Because I think we're, we're only gonna have enough time since like one lecture is here. Yeah, let's start, we'll, we'll start with that. Um, definitely look at all the examples I'm supposed to. And then, you know, definitely check out this, this channel. Yeah. Yeah, definitely let me know. You know, once, if, if ever the MATLAB coding kind of gets to you, you can kind of slow it down or I can give you more. Yeah, you too. Tony, any final questions before I wrap it up? All right, see you Thursday.